Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about AI, specifically AI-powered art tools. And is this the future of art? And to be honest, mostly I look at AI as being a buzzword. Now, no doubt, AI are super important. Machine learning, things like deep fakes, obviously this is all stuff that is going to be more and more and more important in our future. But when it comes down to consumer-level art generation tools, how important is AI? And we're going to look at two programs today. One of them you've seen in front of you, I actually covered it on this channel in the past, it's it's called Luminar. And if you happen to really be impressed by what you see today, uh, this is available on Humble for like, if you watch this video as I record it, you've got about a day to decide. Uh, so if, if you want to pick this one up, you can get it dirt cheap. And I actually honestly got to admit, since I picked this bundle up like a month and a half ago, I use Luminar every single day. And the reason I use Luminar every single day is I am no artist. I suck at Photoshop. I don't want to pay a monthly subscription, by the way. And I don't want to use something like uh, Lightroom or whatever. So I'd rather have the machine do 90% of the work for me. And that is exactly what Luminar does. Later in this, we're also going to watch another um, topic on uh, artificial intelligence from an NVIDIA example project for actually creating 2D graphics from scratch using AI interpolation. So let's start here first with Luminar and see what we've got here. Now you can do some really simple stuff. You can let the AI look at it and figure out what it looks, thinks looks good. So we want to enhance the contrast and so on. This isn't much different than traditional filters that you see in any other program. But what we can do here is some more interesting stuff. This is just a stock photo I downloaded off the interwebs. And let's say I want to do something like you commonly have to do, such as, for example, let's get rid of this guy's head. So we're going to do that. We're going to come over here to the erase tool. And what you would normally do here is a combination of probably cloning over the particular area you want to get rid of. Well, in this case, we're going to let AI do its thing. So coming in here, going to zoom in a little bit. There is the area we're working with. We can go ahead and upsize this slightly. All right, so let's change the size of our brush. All right, there we go. So now what we're going to do is just basically give it some guide. So it's not 100% AI, you're still guiding it. So you're telling it, okay, this is the area I want to get rid of. And it's smart enough to figure out, you know, it wants to get that little bits of hair that you highlighted. So I know if you sort of miss something, it can generally figure it out. Uh, I wish there was a flood or an automatic flood tool built in here, but let's just go ahead, we'll highlight this guy out. So I wanna go get rid of this guy's head. That's what I do. I erase, and then artificial intelligence looks at the background, the foreground, and gets rid of pretty much everything. Okay, I definitely missed a spot there. I could have been more accurate with my brush, but look at how good of a job it did at pulling out the cloud. Now, don't get me wrong, this is something an artist can do, and an artist can probably do this in just a few minutes. But to get it to this degree, that is impressive. Now, let's go one step beyond this and, um, Let's consider this background. So let's say we want to get rid of this entire sky. How are we going to do that? Well, that is another thing that Luminar does in this case. So we're going to go in here, go down to this palette tools, and you can see here we actually have a sky replacement tool. And this is where AI really shows its strength. Let's do a stormy sky in the background. And boom, we now have a headless dude with a stormy sky. And we've got a number of different settings we could do here. We could also have uh, the relighting. We'd have the effects on the scene. So you see here the darker sky is causing a darker train in the background or a lighter train. So there you can see where AI is really shining. That process of completely replacing that sky, that would have been more problematic. And let's say also now we want to do a little bit more light here. Well, we could go ahead and drop in a sun ray here. So let's place it somewhere in our scene. Makes sense to sort of be, well, let's say it's kind of there-ish. But obviously, and let's turn that on. There you see, okay, whoa, we got a lot of sun coming. It doesn't look that convincing. Well, this is because it is not behind this guy. So let's do that. We'll turn down the penetration. And now all of a sudden you're seeing the uh, the surface in front. It's figuring out a depth that isn't actually there and doing the uh, ray occlusion for you. So you move this guy around and you see as it's less occluded, so it's pulling, it's, it's seeing the white t-shirt as being uh, more see-through. Same thing we could do it with the clouds. We could have it come up in the cloud cover, darker clouds, you get less through. Lighter clouds, you get more through. It's a pretty profound effect, but this is, again, artist-driven tools. You're gonna to find almost every time, you, you, you as a discerning artist are gonna probably look there and go, all right, that looks like crap, especially let's say I do this over here, and we want it to go, we don't want these rays to go over this guy or anything like that. We just want the effect to be in the scene here. Well, that's where the artist still comes in. You come in and you start doing masking. So what I'm gonna say is this tool is only going to apply to the areas that I mask. I did not mean to paint over that person, mind you. So there we go. So that's the only area that's gonna get the sun rays. Let's do a quick erase. And so we get this guy out of there. So you kind of, you're still guiding the AI for how to work, but you take these tools combined 
and you could do some really, really quick work uh, that you probably, you know, if, if you have my artistic ability coming in, probably didn't have the ability to do before, and you're letting the computer do the grunt work for you, the replacing, the smoothing, the blending. And again, I know if you're an artist and you looked at the way it le relighted the scene when I changed the background, you probably went, oh, that's terrible. And, and you know what? you could probably do so much better. But this is so far beyond what I could have done. And then we've got various different things here we could do. Uh, augmentation, we have AI deal with the sky for us. So AI also can apply, and not an area I'm particularly careful, caring about, but skin enhancing. And you probably already experienced this on your smartphone. And I gotta admit, I hate it. I hate the way my smartphone looks with any kind of an artificial intelligence filter on there. But there definitely is a market for it because almost every selfie you see out there has had an AI processing pass on it. So so this program, Luminar, blew my mind with what it is actually capable of doing, and it really opened my eyes to what AI is all about. So once again, if you are interested in picking it up, the Humble Bundle it has about a day left in it. And if you want a little bit more detail about Luminar, I did do a video on it. There's a new version, by the way, Luminar AI. And so far as I can tell, that is mostly buzzwording. It's not really a lot more to it. There's mostly just new portrait tools. No reason to upgrade in my humble opinion. So this guy right here at that price is an absolute steal. It's the best 25 bucks US you are going to spend if you work in image processing at all. And I've used this for pretty much every single title graphic I have done since picking it up. And I've really appreciated the results. Now, the second tool we're gonna look at is another AI tool. And this one is an NVIDIA project. Um, you got to come in here and say, yeah, I want to participate with this. But this one is an art generation tool. It's not the most impressive thing you've ever seen at the end of the day, but it can do some pretty amazing stuff. And again, it is artist guided machine learning in action here. It's based on uh, this paper from NVIDIA right there. So if you really want to get into the details of it, it's semantic image synthesis with spatially adaptive normalization or SPADE. That is the algorithm behind the scenes here. Uh, but what we're going to do here is basically start with a template of sorts. So I'm going to go ahead. Yep. You got to come in here. You click here. I will link this by the way. This is just a web page. What you are doing here is ultimately using a, or creating an upload segment map. So for the checkbox created, we're gonna start with a basic landscape to work from. So let's go ahead, pick one of these water ones there. There is our starting point. And now what we can do is actually start telling it how we want our, our landscape or our terrain to go. And I gotta admit, some tools work so much better than others. So let's start here and we're gonna go landscape and rock. So let's do a couple rocks. Here's your horizon line. That's why these images match up nice. Almost all of them have a natural horizon line. So I'm just gonna come in here, paint brush tool, and we'll paint in. And we're just basically giving block outs to the AI to say, here, make some rocks. And we click there, and then boom, it figures that out. And that's kind of the idea behind it. So let's go ahead, we add a mountain into our background. So let's just do here, 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 around like so, around our rock. And we'll do a flood tool on that one and we'll paint it in. So every color here corresponds with a raw building material for it to work from. So now that we've added a mountain in, boom, we say, okay, generate. And there's what it did. So now I'll say, okay, well, we want to add a little bit of uh, snow on that one. So snow is under landscape, I think. Yeah, it's right here. Let's paint the top of, oops, I did mean, not mean to fill. On the bright side, there is an undo, control Z. So let's just go up here. We'll add a little bit of snow to the top of our mountain and generate. And then boom, we now have a snowy mountain. And then we just kind of keep going. You're, you're giving it raw materials to work from. So let's say instead of having water down here, we want it to be mud. So we just come in here and we will paint in the mud color. So we've got some mud going on there, like so. We're good with a little bit of water. So let's do mud up to the edge of our mountain, around the edge of our rock. Our rock's gonna probably get a little bit ugly. So let's go ahead and paint that. So now we have a muddy terrain leading up into a mountain, but you still got a little bit of your water kicking in. So you're, you're feeding it raw template data over here, and then it's taking that information and doing the best it can with it. So let's say back here, let's add a little bit more clouds. We wanna do a little cloud in the background. Let's, let's make a cloud here and see what it does. Takes the cloud input, and then it adapts it with the other layers that are available and just starts to paint it as it goes. Now, you're not going to get the nicest looking results out of this right yet, but this is kind of staggering at what it can do. And you can sort of see how 
we can use a bit of machine learning and raw inputted data. So, so behind the scenes here, they've obviously got a template for what a rock should look like, what a tree should look like, or uh, a database of those things. And it paints for them based off of the relation of the different uh, colors in the segmentation map, which by the way, you can go ahead and download this anytime and then you can upload it back up if you want to work from scratch. So this is your segmentation map. Uh, and then your raw landscape to work from. And I believe, and I haven't really worked with this too much, you can get some uh, style filtering in there. You can upload an image kind of as inspiration for the algorithm to get the color and the tone and the tinting and so on in there. But then you just sort of start working with these things together. I want to add a little bit more water to this. There we go, add a little bit of water in. And what's it gonna do? It's gonna basically create a puddle. Let's make that a little bit bigger, like so. And what's it gonna do? It's going to make it bigger. This is really impressive stuff. And I can see this being the future of content creation tools. Again, we're looking at artificial intelligence basically, but um, it's not flawless. Now, where it starts to fall down is when I get into things like plants. Let's go ahead and draw a tree. So let's do right here. There, tree image. And yeah, so tree's not bad, but generally you get these these scary trees, or either that or I'm just really poor at drawing. So let's fill that in and see what it does to our tree. So the trees don't work amazingly well. They, they really do look like a clone stamp brush going on. Whereas some of the train stuff, it actually looked sh shockingly good. And then we get here into uh, the building materials and it, it really kind of falls apart. I don't even know how bridge works. Let's go ahead and just, let's draw. I don't even know what I'm drawing here to be honest, but the end result of our bridge it's I, I, I so it might be user error that I don't understand how bridge works, but that's what you get out of bridge. It's all of these building stuff that I find it kind of falls apart a little bit. Same way if I do like a brick wall across the center line here, it doesn't look really good to me in that particular case. So it's really it's nailing the landscape, the ground effects, and so on. So again, if I've got this brick wall and I want to go ahead and add a little bit of see if I add some mud on the brick wall. There we go in mixing this other stuff in, it does quite a good job. Now let's turn this instead into a sandy beach down here. So let's just go ahead and boom like that. There, some sand input. We got a little bit of overlap with, I think that was mud, draw that in. And there you see you now have a sandy beach instead. This is some really next level stuff. It sort of kind of reminds me a little bit of Wang tiles where you have like, you set up kind of rules and then when you have the, the interaction between the different tiles when you're drawing your tile map, it does this shape together. But I, I'm kind of, again, pretty staggered that you could go from this to this with so little input. By the way, you can also do a clone brush. So you can come in here, you pick, so I'm now drawing the tree and let's say like there. So I'm gonna put the, the tree in front of that wall. And then, but again, like I said, the tree is problematic for sure. Some of these things don't work as well as other things, but I hope you can actually see the genesis of something pretty amazing in here. You're drawing with simple colors that correspond to paint brushes of types, landscapes, roads, uh, sky, um, river, water, mud, so on. And the, the machine learning is doing the rest of the work. Again, this is an experimental project. It's early on, but it does, again, showcase where artificial intelligence or more appropriately, artificial intelligence artist-driven tools are coming from. And I'd love to see this in a 3D modeling tool where you do a 3D modeling tool and you know, as you're sculpting, you kind of say, I am trying to make a mech or a person or a house or a horse or, a, and it kind of guides you towards it. We've got a couple of animation tools I've covered on this channel in the past that use machine learning. Cascadeur is definitely one of them, um, but these are two different art programs definitely worth checking out. So first off, if you do any photo editing work uh, and you're not really kind of want to get in the trenches with it, Luminar, check it out. Great program. There's a day left to get it cheap. Uh, by the way, it, at normal price, it's only 60 or 70 bucks, I think. Anyway, so definitely one to check out. And then we've got um, this guy right here. Uh, it is the Aguagan. I don't know how to say that, uh, but it is available at this website. I will toss it down below if you want to check that out. So those are two tools that really hint at the art AI driven future that we have. And I'm curious what you think. Do you, were you impressed by anything you saw today or does it all look way too primitive and early in your opinion? Let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later.